Okay, so in this presentation, I want to introduce you to some of the basic differences and similarities between the two broad categories of cells called prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to start with the eukaryotic cells first. First of all, the eukaryotes. So these cells are typically much more complex. And what makes them more complex is that their DNA is housed in a protective nucleus. You'll often hear the definition of a eukaryote is a cell with membrane-bound organelles. That's another reason why they are more complex. Well, what do we mean by membrane-bound organelles? Well, what we mean by that is there's an outer layer to it, kind of like a skin, although maybe skin is not the best use of words, but there's an outer boundary that allows materials in and allows materials out. And so in the picture, I've highlighted the mitochondria. We're not going to go through all of these cell parts, but the mitochondria is an example of a membrane-bound organelle. It, it makes energy for the cell. And uh, another example you may have heard of is called the chloroplast. It's what plant cells have to do photosynthesis. This is an animal cell in the diagram, so there are no chloroplasts in this picture. But it also is a membrane-bound organelle. Lysosomes help to digest uh, and break down certain food particles, and they also are membrane bound. The rough and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, also membrane bound. Uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum helps in the production of proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum helps to build up, uh, and, and build up fats and lipids. The Golgi apparatus, again, another example of a membrane-bound organelle. The Golgi apparat apparatus helps to sort, package, and distribute proteins around the cell. And at the bottom here, we have a vacuole, which is kind of like the storage container, membrane-bound as well. And so when we look at eukaryotes, they're typically much larger in size. The diagram shows a, a eukaryotic cell that's about 20 micrometers in size. That symbol is the abbreviation for micrometers. We're going to come back to this in a little bit. So when we look at the classification of eukaryotes, we notice that there are uh, many big kingdoms of life that are considered eukaryotic. The picture shows a member of Kingdom Protista. This is an example of an amoeba. They live in pond water, they're single cell, but they are eukaryotes. Kingdom Fungi, I'm sure we've heard of. Mushrooms are a great example of Kingdom Fungi. They, they feed off of, of dead organic matter. I'm sure we've all heard of Kingdom Plantae, also known as plants. Plants are photosynthetic and they obtain their food by, by manufacturing sugars through photosynthesis. And then Kingdom Animalia, which we are a member of Kingdom Animalia, as well as frogs. And so these are the four big broad categories of life called kingdoms that are eukaryotic. And when we look at this little diagram here, as I just mentioned a moment ago, there are four of the six kingdoms of life. So if four kingdoms of life are eukaryotic, well, what about those other two? Let's talk about those next. So next, I want to mention the prokaryotes, and uh, much less complex. And what makes them less complex is the fact that they do not have a nucleus. And it's not that they just don't have a nucleus, but they also lack most of those organelles that we just went through. Uh, when you look at the diagram, yes, they have a few organelles in common with eukaryotes, ribosomes, cytoplasm. The cell, the cell wall, the cell membrane, but that's really about it. There's not a lot in common that they have. Prokaryotes lack membrane-bound organelles. No mitochondria, no vacuoles, no chloroplasts, no Golgi apparatus. And they're much, much smaller in size. If you remember that previous picture of the eukaryotic cell that was about 20 micrometers in size, this one is only about 3. And so when we put the cells side by side one another with our scale here, it really is striking just to see how much larger eukaryotic cells are versus prokaryotic. And when it comes to the classification of prokaryotes, here we have our, our picture of the six kingdoms of life. And one of them 
is labeled kingdom eubacteria, and the other one is labeled kingdom archaebacteria. So if you see here, there's a little clue as to what types of organisms are prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are better known as bacteria. So whenever we hear the word bacteria, we, uh, we are referring to prokaryotic cells. Well, what about their similarities? We just went over their differences. What about their similarities? Well, prokaryotes and eukaryotes each have a cell or plasma membrane that allows materials to come in and out. Each has DNA. DNA is the molecule of heredity. It's the molecule that passes genetic, genetic information from generation to generation. Each has ribosomes. When you look at the two diagrams, they each have ribosomes. That's because they each need proteins, and that's the job of ribosomes, is to build proteins. And each has a fluid interior called the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is really important. Uh, because this is where a lot of the chemical reactions that take place within a cell occur. So the last thing I want to briefly mention is the endosymbiosis theory. And prokaryotes, also called bacteria, are thought to be the first inhabitants of Earth. And we think that because we've analyzed their DNA, we found fossils, and they appear to be the oldest fossils. And over time, we think that eukaryotes eventually evolved from them. So protista, plants, animals, and fungus, our ancestors are prokaryotes, are bacteria. And as the theory goes, prokaryotic cells are thought to have devoured and swallowed up what would eventually become the mitochondria, what would eventually become the chloroplast. And over the years, over the billions of years, prokaryotic cells became a little more different, a little more diverse. And that's really a summary of what the endosymbiosis theory says. I, I, I would encourage you to Google it and look at some of the details. It's a pretty interesting theory. But thank you for joining this quick summary of the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Please stay tuned for some acknowledgments. And next I want to acknowledge some of the photographers who made these, some of these images possible. So please, I wanted to, to thank the photographers and, uh, and check out some of their work. You might like some of the other work that they have.